to be with us uh, today. I just would like to remind you that uh, the, we are going to be uh, the webinar for around uh, one hour long. Uh, we have around 45 minutes to for for, for William to explain all. Uh, what he would like to, to, to explain to you. And then we'll have a uh, 50 minutes at the end where you can you can use the chat or you can use the microphones to to ask your questions. Uh, during the whole session you can use the chat too. So if you just think of something you can write it in the chat and we can go through. So let's see if uh, William, can is Ron, are you there? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Victor, and everyone. So, can I take over the screen now? Yeah, sure. Okay. I just would like to to remind you all that uh, the session will is being re recorded, and we will put a uh, session later on in the scientific repository. Uh, yeah, here we go. Right. I, think, I think everyone can see my screen now. Can you see me, Victor? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can see it definitely. Okay, right. I'm ready to go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, basically, today I'm going to talk a little bit about inquiry and uh, go through some of the uh, online simulations, which I think uh, are useful uh, in inquiry. Uh, how I came across these, I was involved in the Pathway Project uh, for um, Inquiry-Based Science Education and attended summer school and um, picked up on some of these simulations and looked at them in terms of how they could be used to support students uh, learning in their inquiry. So um, to start off anyway, uh, I was at a, one of the talks in um, at the Brussels conference, the scientists conference, the master talk, and I was very impressed with that. So I've just uh, by way of introduction, I've taken a screen grab from the front of their website and just a little bit about inquiry there that it's the teacher is now becomes a person who is helping their students to discover their knowledge rather than the traditional uh, imparting of knowledge. So I thought that was a, a very nice graphic there and a nice way to, to start off or to introduce just to say a little bit about inquiry. What I'm interested in is how, how we can use models to help students to understand concepts and delve deeper into them. Uh, the immediate criticism that comes from people is that uh, science teachers think, oh, if we're going to use models, that's going to replace the practical work. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, the way I see models being used is that they should be used to support the practical work and allow the students to uh, further engage and explore some of the concepts they have met in their practical activities. Uh, throughout the presentation, uh, I have a number of links. And what I have done is I have put them all on uh, the bottom of this screen. You'll see there there's a link for delicious.com. And it's forward slash. Uh, Scientix EU and it's underscore IE, so it's Scientix with the uh, underscore IE at the end of it. So all the links I refer to and my presentation are available uh, at this link, and uh, my presentation is available for download if you, if you feel you have any use for it afterwards. Um, so any of the links that I refer to today are all on that one page. Um, having said that, uh, so starting off, from the Pathway Project, and I have taken this uh, from the 
UK uh, pathway team from their website some of the um, features of IBSE, the essential features, the questioning uh, uh, to build up evidence. And I think uh, in my experience of um, when uh, I was using inquiry and I started with uh, inquiry or we didn't call it inquiry then, but I started back in uh, 1976, uh, which is quite a long time ago. And one of the difficulties we had with the students was that they weren't used to this type of learning. They, they had no experience of it. So we had in a way to teach them how to learn, to get them to ask the right questions and explore and come up with uh, evidence and information which was, which was relevant and real and important. So uh, also students have to evaluate their explanations and communicate them later. So this, this is basically the pathway summary of how we should look at inquiry. Uh, I've also put that in a, in a graphic which is, uh, has further detail. And again, further detail and explanation of each stage can be found on the, the pathway.co uh, or pathway, the UK pathway website, which is one of the links on, on the page. And it makes for uh, a quite interesting reading looking at the, the, the features of the, the general features of inquiry. I suppose the other thing to say about inquiry is that for some students, um, open inquiry uh, is good, but for a lot of students, they need some guidance and indeed uh, structured where the teacher may have to give them the questions early on while the student is learning about uh, inquiry and how to uh, inquire in an, in an appropriate way. So the key elements that I've picked out are the expectation. And again, I'm looking at these um, online uh, simulations and models from the point of view of maybe a student maybe has completed their practicals. And when you uh, do practicals, uh, sometimes uh, the time, there isn't enough time to finish what they're doing or a group may not get uh, a set of results or something can happen and uh, often all the student is left with is um, a set of uh, results maybe that they've got off someone else and they don't have time to uh, explore the concepts which are being dealt with in the practical and maybe reflect a little bit more. So this is where I see the uh, online simulations and models being very useful to help the student uh, to further explore uh, their, the, the, the concepts that they're, they're learning. So to that end, uh, the, the website which I'm going to refer to is the Schroeder website. And Schroeder is a, a, a US organization which uh, again has been to the forefront in the US with, uh, with uh, online models and simulations that students use. Their website, uh, shoulder.org, there's a particular, the second link there um, is the Interactivate section. The Interactivate section consists of a huge set of online activities. And this particular website gets about uh, 3.5 million or more hits every month. So a lot of students are using it and a lot of students find it useful. Uh, so for yourselves, it may or may not be something which uh, you can engage with or you can give to your students that they can engage with. So this is what the uh, Interactivate looks like. So I'm going to go and have a look at um, this is essentially the, the page and when I click on activities there, uh, I'll find a, a whole list of activities that I can search through. I can sort by subject, sort by audience. Now, a lot of them are mathematical, but uh, my background is I'm a, a biology teacher really, and I have found some of them quite useful. And indeed, graphing is always a, an issue for students, I always found an issue. And to explain to a student 
the information that's on a graph and the information that they can take on off a graph. This is uh, what um, I found this some of the online activities on this site very useful. So we'll go back to the presentation again. So each of the activities, just before we look at the activity, uh, each of the activities, um, it's nice because you have the activity itself and you have a tabs as per the bottom of the screen there. So there's a tab for the learner who can uh, learn more about the background of the activity. There's um, a help tab, which is the technical side, how the controls work. And there's an instructor tab. And basically that's uh, just mapping to curricula and it's usually US curricula, but it also gives um, some related um, uh, activities and that, that you can use related to this. So the first uh, one anyway that I'm going to look at is uh, an online simulation which allows you to draw graphs and it helps you to explore a graph uh, and see a little bit more about it in a dynamic um, sort of way. This is the multifunction uh, data flyer. It works in uh, all browsers that I've tried it in. Uh, and there is an app, I believe, for the iPad. Uh, not, uh, I haven't tried out the app. But essentially, uh, and again, we'll just look at the uh, online version of it. Essentially, I can use it to um, look at uh, various equations. And basically, I'm going to start with a simple uh, linear equation. So now it has um, loaded for me. Uh, and essentially, down here at the bottom of the screen, I can input my equation. So it's f of x equals to, now I'm just going to do a simple equation, 2x uh, plus 3. Now, I type in the equation down here, and I click on the button set the function. So it immediately draws a graph for me here of the function. Now, a couple of things I can do uh, that is interesting is I can see, I can manipulate the function in real time and, and, and see what happens. So for instance, if I change the, if I see the constant three there is shown in green. So I have a green slider here so just by moving the green slider up and down, I can show uh, what happens to the graph when, when I change the value of the constant. Now, uh, many years ago, I taught some maths, and uh, my students weren't um, the uh, high-flying students. They were struggling a bit with the maths, um, as I did myself. But, um, a tool like this would be very useful to explain or to uh, delve a little bit deeper and try and understand the nature of graphs and the information that's uh, being portrayed on the graph. Now, if you notice that the consonant in front of the x, the 2 there, the parameter there, is in purple. So uh, I can see I can change the value of that using the slider, and uh, I can go up. Uh, and I can bring it down uh, and see what happens to the slope of the graph. So, so interestingly, this can allow me, this is a nice tool for um, investigating uh, the slope of the graph and how, how the slope of the graph works. There's another slider here at the bottom of the graph here, and that will allow me to find the value of at any point on the line. So. With that particular slope, and this is particularly useful for uh, graphs and experimental results on that, as I move the slider up, I can see that as the value of the value of x changes, so does the value of y with the coordinates there. Because I have set the value there of 1x plus 0. So in, in fact, in essence, that equation there is an x equal.
a William. I I don't know if it's only me, but I cannot I cannot hear you well. Yeah. Okay. I think in the chat. And with the graph. That. So, will, uh, William, we, yes. we lost the value when you were talking about changing the the purple value of X. Right. When I went from the PowerPoint. No, no, no. Here, uh, like one minute ago or something like this. Or oh, is the sound when back were, again? When you were moving the, the purple. Uh, the oh, when I was moving the purple. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. We go back to the purple. The purple slider is is the value of x, right? Um, okay, sorry. The purple slider is the value of x, and as I change the value of x, the slope of the line changes there. So I can investigate, I can use the black slider then to see how the, the relationship there between the, the input value, which is the value of x, and the output, uh, which is y. And Whereas um, this is uh, good for maths, it's also good for me as a biology teacher when I'm trying to get my uh, students to understand slopes uh, on graphs. So this is what has appealed to me. I can put in grids here if I want to. Uh, I can show the data um, there uh, from the graph. So I can do uh, various things. I can set a new function. I can also, if I want to, um, use quadratic equations as well. Uh, so I can put in a, a quadratic equation. Um, I can do simultaneous equations. If I need to graph two equations, all I need to do is to put a semicolon between the two equations. So uh, there's quite a lot of uh, that I can do. It's quite a useful tool. You see here, I'll just go up to the tabs to uh, demonstrate the uh, background information that's there and the related resources. Uh, so uh, again, you can, it, it's the level of complexity you can use this to is quite high, or you can use it just uh, quite simple. The help there, it's always great to get a help there. So if there's something you need to do, like how do I enter functions, how do I change the scales, etc., manipulate multi, multiple functions, all the data, all the help files are there uh, beside us, beside the activity. So I can go through the tabs there. Um, best way to capture it now, uh, there are printing instructions at the bottom here. But usually that suggests a print screen. So I think if you have Windows 7 or something like that, do a screen grab uh, if you need to and put it into a Word file or whatever. This is the easy way um, to um, keep the data. Anyway, so that's the uh, multifunction uh, data flyer. Uh, I'm going to go back to the presentation now. So hopefully all is well. Um, Right, so uh, on we go. So these are some of the equations that uh, you can use. There's a simultaneous equation there. Um, uh, so, and there's an example. You can see there how the um, quadratic equation is input. You use the caret uh, key for if you want to put in x squared, which is just generally shift and number six. And the other thing to do is if you're putting in just x squared, just one little quirk in it is you put in one in front of the x. So that allows you to change the value. Uh, if you just put in x squared, you'll find the purple slider will not be available. But that comes with um, use and practice. These are my biology graphs that I just uh, put in there. So hopefully, having done some work on the with the multifunction data flyer. My students now sometimes uh, I find they look at me blankly when I talk about rates and carbon dioxide concentration and input and output. You nearly have to go back to X and Y to get them to uh, understand what you're talking about. But hopefully with a bit of work on the data flyer, they will now understand my different graphs and they can 
they will can interrogate and evaluate slopes and how uh, you know what causes a slope of a graph to change and what its actual meaning is. Uh, to this end, I found I was looking around for a, a simulator, and I found a nice um, one for uh, photosynthesis. Uh, very simple. Uh, it's hopefully yeah, it's it's up here. So I can essentially uh, again, having done my photosynthesis experiments, this allows me to manipulate a number of variables. So I can change the light intensity with a slider here, up and down. Uh, the CO2 levels can be changed up and down. Uh, and I can change the, uh, I, with my light bulb here, I can uh, simulate uh, photosynthesis in different um, wavelengths, with different wavelengths of light. I'll set it by five, and I will just show you what happens. There, I'll press the start button and it starts producing bubbles. Uh, I can hear the bubbles uh, here, and maybe you can't, but uh, I can adjust. So keeping, I can adjust one parameter, keeping the other CO2 level constant. Uh, again, just press the start button. Uh, good for revision and interrogating discussion uh, about um, an experiment maybe that the class have done. Uh, you can see my results uh, building up there. Um, so I'm, I, yeah, I'll just do one more now, just to. Uh, and it's very simple. Uh, I came across this this just really accidentally, and I thought, yeah, this this is nice. I like this, and you know, you can. Uh, Again, you can do it in the different lights, and it's quite simple. Uh, but the results are, you can get your results there, and again, you can uh, just um, uh, go back to your graphs. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so if you wanted to graph the results here, um, another inter interactive base feature, um, yeah. I have it's just a simple plot. Okay, yeah, so it's loading. So this time you notice I just put in my data there and it will draw the graph for me and I will plot. So if I do something like uh, just to show you, uh, I'll do it right now. Uh, and I just plot an update and it draws the graph for me. Again, a screen grab will quickly, so uh, what I like about these is that, you know, students sometimes are not getting bogged down in the detail of drawing a graph and actually lose concentration of what you're trying to get them to understand or they can go home and these are free to access, there's no charge and uh, so uh, it allows for uh, further investigation. Okay, so that's, that's another interactive ace, uh one. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, this, here's another one now. So we're going on to the uh, balance of nature. Uh, um, and this is a nice, uh, uh, I like this simulation again, as I say, coming from the biology background, but it can also be used um, in uh, maths. Um, okay. Uh, but somewhere here. Yeah, it's it's the rabbits and the wolves. Okay, so it's the, the the balance of nature, the food chain. So it doesn't look much. It's produced with this program called Agent Sheets, uh, and but uh, lots of good information on it. In the beginning, basically, I have some rabbits and I have some grass in a forest, and uh, there's some wolves around. If I click on this new cumulative stats. It tells me I have 20 rabbits and five wolves. Okay, for a start there, I can go back. Now, if I start the simulation, uh, nothing much happening, but I, if I produce the population graph, now I can see uh, what's uh, happening. I can see the uh, population of the grasses going up. 
the rabbits are going up. At any stage, I can pause the simulation there and just have a look at my cumulative stats, which tells me I now have that many rabbits, so many have died and so many have been born that many. I now have wolves returned to the simulator, uh, let the simulation run again. Uh, and um, I'm now getting, uh, I can pause this, and this I think is probably more suitable for classroom use, and again for reflection. I can see the slopes changing, so uh, can I come up with a correlation uh, between the, the graphs? Um, so I let my simulation run, and uh, whereas uh, as opposed to doing something like this statically, or as opposed to a student, uh, you know, with self-directed learning. So uh, at any stage, I can pause the simulation, and I can say, right now, what's happening with our graphs there? So a uh, lot of information there, or I can just uh, view the cumulative stats there, and see now I have that many rabbits and that many wolves, and so on. So um, and it's 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 effortless, um, you know, trying to set this up on a in a static or do a PowerPoint to explain this, um, you know, it's, it's just going to take so much time. So when I'm finished, then I can reset the simulation. I can go in there and view and modify the parameters. So if I want to change the number of rabbits or I change the number of, so there's various parameters. Uh, I can change, and again, this would facilitate a discussion of, you know, what parameters can I realistically change? And uh, so, um, these are um, some of the things I can do. I can change the size of the forest to see is there any significance in, you know, it's a big forest, small forest, how how, the, how significant is the graph, or the shape of it. Now, basically, an island is a is a forest on its own, and toroid is is a is a circular forest. I think they're connected. Anyway, so that's the the rabbits and wolves. Uh, all you need is a web link, and uh, away you go. Uh, and or you know, if the student has a web link, um, again it, that begs other questions. Do pe people have internet access? But it's something you can. It's easy enough to design questions or ask students to formulate uh, questions based on. Um, what you want them to know, uh, and uh, what information you need to get out of them. So it's as simple or as, as complex as you need to make it, that one. There are, in, in Interactive uh, there are games also like Connect4, and it, it ranges from the very easy to the very uh, complex uh, types of um, simulations. Okay, almost. So that's the balance of nature. Onwards now we change from the um, biology um, to the um, chemistry. Uh, at least I have been a poor biology teacher. I'm not I'm never quite sure where the demarcation lines exist between chemistry and physics. And also when I started my career, um, I taught integrated science for a while, which was which was really good because we didn't talk about physics or chemistry or biology. We, did, we, we, we dealt with patterns. So we studied patterns. And uh, in a sense, in a way, it, it made a lot more sense. But here we have uh, the ideal gas. Uh, yet another simulation for you to look at. Um, and I found lately, um, and I suppose part of the reason why I didn't ask people to try this as they were uh, listening to the webinar or, or watching it is because you do need your Java uh, up to date. And I found lately on my Mac uh, book uh, that this um, simulation is not working so well. It did previously, um, not now. And uh, I tried to fix it, and I, you know, I gave up after a certain amount of time. But this is uh, again. You can see the parameters are listed below uh, the uh, model for an ideal gas. I can freeze it just by bringing the mouse over and you know, uh, grabbing it there with the mouse left click. So what I have here is I have the number of particles. 
I have my pressure and I have my velocity, which I'm going to leave the velocity as it is. But I'm going to just briefly use it, or a student could use it, to examine the relationship between pressure and volume here. So if I go into 50 there and I change it to 100 um, and I press enter, you'll notice I can see the pressure change. So by grabbing the piston there, I can get a reading and I can note that reading. So I started off with 50, so now I go back to 25. Um, and again, it, it would allow a student to have a look at um, uh, Boyle's Law um, and examine Boyle's Law. I suppose uh, you see at 25 now the, the volume changes, so I can, get, uh, I can get a set of readings for this annual graph it. Um, Boyle was a, a, a scientist, he was the Earl of Cork, and he lived, well, not uh, basically about 100 kilometers from where I am now. Um, so um, we have an interest in, in Boyle here. He was, he was one of our, our scientists, even though he was um, the Earl of Cork. And another one was Tindall, who lives about, who lived about uh, 30 kilometers away from here. So we're proud of these scientists, even though they were around for a while. So that's, that's our model of the uh, ideal gas. Again, you can uh, play around with that. Um, not anything too uh, visual. Uh, so uh, looking around, I found this one. Uh, and this is the uh, University of Texas model. Um, and uh, I'm glad to see that message from Microsoft coming up, which means that the link should work. Um, it's telling me the world might end if I press this. Uh, so basically, again, this is a flash simulation. Uh, it can be downloaded, but you will need a, it's an SWF uh, flash file. So there's a little free program called Swift Player, which can be downloaded, which will allow it to work. So what can I do here? Well, I have my gas here. I can, I can select the gas and I can add some particles here to it. Um, right. So uh, basically I can use this to look at the relationship between temperature and volume or the relationship between pressure and volume. So I can uh, lock uh, I can lock the volume if I want to, um, or I can, as you notice, if I reduce the volume, so what I'm doing there is I'm increasing the pressure. So you can see I'm getting, I get a reading here for volume, I get a reading here for pressure, right? Um, so um, again, I can change the, the, the volume there uh, and change the pressure. So. I can get a set of readings there very easily. Or the, after having done the Boyle's Law experiment or the gas laws, this um, would give the student an opportunity to um, investigate and basically explore a little bit further. Um, I'll just bring back up the um, volume here. So down here I have my temperature. So you notice the temperature there is set at Kelvin. So if I click on cool there, so I notice that it's causing my temperature to drop. I can see uh, volume there just by holding the mouse there. I can change the temperature so I can investigate the parameters there. Likewise, heating up. So simply uh, in talking about a gas even without looking at the uh, various um, the figures or anything like that. You can uh, investigate the effect of, of pressure and temperature on a gas very easily. Uh, get a set of readings, which, uh, and then maybe uh, you know use Interactivate or whatever, and put them in to make uh, to to get um, a graph, you know, as your readings and and analyze the results. 
so even though there um it's a quite simple model um it's uh, will allow you to uh investigate uh these um as much or as little as you want i just uh put in a couple of slides about um inquiry uh sometimes when you know people start to explain inquiry and the academic uh explanations of inquiry uh i think sometimes uh, students and the student teachers can often end up more confused uh than they were uh, in the beginning and particularly if, if students come from a, a traditional have been taught in the traditional way um i suppose most teachers um will uh teach uh, the way they have been uh, taught them themselves so uh, this was uh, from Bryn Mawr College, uh, which is in another US college. And I thought it was a, a nice graphic which uh, outlines the difference between the inquiry-based and the traditional. And I think a couple of points that come up there, the, the, the student participation, the active. Uh, so if a student has a device, uh, whatever that device is, whether it's a computer or, or a tablet or whatever, uh, at least they can actively engage with um, the uh, concepts, the scientific concepts themselves. And uh, the idea of these models is that they would produce uh, results which are meaning, you know, they're producing meaningful results. Uh, the visual ones show patterns. Uh, and I think it's probably very important for students to to um, show patterns because uh, unless uh, one of the issues with inquiry is on if uh, is that students have to learn how to use inquiry properly. Otherwise, uh, you know, if they if they don't know how to uh, uh, learn in a, using an inquiry based method. Um, they can, you know, get very frustrated, especially um, students, uh, especially the students who are not at the top of the class, the um, ordinary students uh, who are um, um, st maybe struggling a bit with the content and uh, struggling a bit with their motivation. Uh, all this inquiry seems a little bit like hard work. So that's where I think... <laughs> Uh, that the um, online uh, tools, and indeed they don't even have to be online tools. Increasingly, there are some uh, apps uh, which are available, which uh, you know can be useful uh, for students, and um, uh, you know where these help and help the student engagement um, overall. So, uh, and it also um, gives them the uh, problem solving. So some of the uh, references, just to give you some of the references, uh, basically some of the websites that uh, I have been looking at. Well, first of all, I suppose I'd mentioned the Pathway Project because uh, I had a direct involvement uh, with that from our the uh, Irish partners in DCU Dublin City University, and we worked with uh, and we worked with the Shoulder Organisation in that, and we did. Uh, produce some papers on this and how uh, you know how uh, online computer models could be useful for to facilitate an inquiry uh, based approach. The um, and the shoulder is the uh, that's where all most of the interactive um, uh, simulations come from. Now there are many other simulations. I know there are hundreds of them, and every time you look online, you find a few more, but. I think what most people need is they need a set of them that they can go back and refer to and use rather than all the time looking for new something, the new new material, look for what's uh, tried and tested. The Maskell project was the uh, maths and science for every day uh, and they use the inquiry approach and they have quite an impressive um, website and that's one of the um, scientific websites as well as Pathway uh, there. The water weed simulation, which I found, I found on it was Biology Corner, which is an individual um, biology teacher uh, again in the U.S. 
uh, some other uh, there's worksheets and that to go with the simulation simple worksheets and other worksheets so it's worth a look at for a biology teacher or maybe um, share it with uh, if, you, if there's a biology uh, teacher there just share it with them uh, and uh, you know it's very useful Bryn Mawr College there I was looking at um, so, you know, to get a summary of inquiry, and again, this is what um, something I came across in my preparation for today, uh, and I thought the screen grab there was was just worth, uh, you know, was certainly worth to look at. And the University of Texas, that had the um, the simulation, the last uh, ideal gas simulation. It also has a lot more chemical ones there, but again, uh, it's uh, um, again, uh, it's a matter of finding your uh, own. I see a question coming up there about plug-in. Yeah, yeah. The technology is always great when it works. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating when it doesn't work. You've got to make sure your Java uh, is is up to date, and you've got to make sure your Adobe Shockwave for some of them is up to date. They're the the two main plugins that uh, you need to use. So there are the references. Um, and again, the links, um, uh, we visited a number of sites uh, here, and uh, I put all the links on one page. So now, uh, unfortunately, it's shown up there if you, it's uh, Scientix uh, underscore, uh, Scientix EU, under, the underscore is not shown up there, dot IE. And from there, you can um, download, um, you can download that presentation if it's of any use to you, but more importantly, you can get uh, to all of the links uh, that I have referred to and been uh, uh, talking about um, today. So um, I've kind of uh, ran through it because I, I didn't feel there was a need to labor on um, some of the things we could, uh, and um, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, so, uh, I know I'm a, I know I'm a little bit early, but I think uh, probably I've I've reached the end of my uh, presentation there. Um, so, and escape out of that. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. If that makes sense. Okay, so. Well, thank you, and thank you very much, Gillian, for your presentation. Uh, as we said, now we have a turn for questions. So if anybody has, uh, has any question for you, they can, they can use the chat or they can, they can turn on their microphone. Yes. And just announce questions. Um, there's a couple of questions on the chat. Um, as I, uh, what um, I will say um, just about the plugins, and just to mention again about the plugins, uh, that uh, you need the Java, you need your Java up to date, and uh, Adobe Shockwave is the plugin. Now, generally, you're prompted to, uh, you're prompted to download those. Now, um, what um, I will say is that if you're using, sometimes people now are using uh, Android devices, and some of these uh, are Flash based. So there is a browser, I know I have it on my phone, it's called Flash Fox, and that's, that's a browser which will allow you to run Flash uh, simulations. I suppose uh, Apple have gone away from Flash, and it's a pity really because there's lots of good educational resources um, available in Flash, and uh, the technical view of Flash seems to, uh, uh, the technical view of Flash seems to be that, oh, it's uh, draining on resources and that, but I think us teachers, we don't really care uh, if if the resource is good and it's useful for our students, we want to use it. You know, we don't just need to use the, the latest technology all the time. Um, 
so um anyway someone asked me about the the url so it's it's https um hold on forward slash forward slash delicious dot com uh and we have it's scientix eu uh underscore i e the i e is for ireland so that should get you the, the link um yeah um uh, someone mentioned there about uh, scientists um uh, Yes, the Earl of Cork was, uh, Robert Boyle was the Earl of Cork, and uh, he produced Boyle's Law, and Tyndall, uh, who was a famous mountaineer, and who also uh, was the, pers the first scientist to describe um, where, how, so why sunsets are red. And he was a famous alpinist as well, so he wrote books on uh, alpine mountaineering, but he was, um, He's from just up the road uh, from me, and my friend is the principal teacher in the primary school where he went to school in. So we have some famous scientists around here, which is good for primary school um, uh, kids because uh, they like to uh, connect their subject with uh, with with people. And uh, for primary schools, um, uh, they you know something like that. Um, and another question comes up here about FET. Yes, uh, I know about FET, and I think FET is, is very good because you can actually download everything from uh, FET onto your computer. So, you know, if you're using an old computer, you can actually download everything that you need, and you don't um, need to, um, uh, you know, you don't need to be online to use FET. So there are many more simulations. Uh, uh, these are just ones that I came across, um, and uh, a lot of um, uh, what I say, I found them useful, and I found that they, I suppose, uh, part part of it, partly because my background for the the last number of years, I've really been working more in technology and and how uh, technology. Uh, helps in teaching and learning uh, more so than uh, I have. Uh, so that's what, um, uh, you know, that's where I come from. Well, so assessment is a different thing. We're, we're still stuck here on paper assessment, but uh, I think, uh, and that's why I say that these uh, online simulations uh, are a tool really uh, to help students and to uh, increase and deepen their uh, understanding. Um, so um, that's really um, uh, why uh, I, I find them useful, uh, and I find that they, you know, can very quickly um, uh, access something. Uh, there are many more, um, and I suppose the nice thing is that you know if you use a VLE for your students, you can actually focus them on a particular uh, simulation, maybe do a little bit of work on it, and maybe, um, you know, produce a few worksheets around the particular simulation that you have. Uh, and I think uh, for some students, the, the worksheets would, um, you know, some questions and answers uh, before, they, before they start uh, would, um, Certainly help them help help them greatly and uh, help them to uh, you know to engage with with the content. So um, uh, is there? I don't know. Have we? Uh, there's a mention here of a free graph plotting software called Desmos. Now I haven't used that. I don't know. Does um, anyone else use it? But um, essentially. Uh, if we have any more questions, I'm quite happy here. I'd talk away all night, uh, but <laughs> whether I make sense or not uh, 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 is uh, is another thing. I see Alan Alan Turing has mentioned. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, Alan Turing was the the man in Bletchley Park. Uh, I have to tell you about my late mother uh, was. Uh, 
worked in association with Bletchley Park. Um, she was a radio operator there and um, taking down messages uh, that were sent away. Uh, she never even knew her Bletchley, Bletchley Park, about Bletchley Park until the 1990s. But um, yeah, no, I think uh, hopefully people have uh, uh, yeah something I see. Uh, um, Fess, uh, Fess is uh, upgrading their apps there. We're getting messages through here. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I think, uh, very useful now with the technology arriving in the classroom and, again, more and more uh, pupils having access to uh, technology. Even on my own phone now, I, I downloaded from Android, and it was one of the uh, resources I found on Scientix. And, um, a little oscilloscope. So I have a little a free app on my phone now for an oscilloscope. So if I whistle, uh, I get a nice wave pattern which I can freeze. Uh, it's a free app. Again, it's it's uh, I, years ago. I I know at school we couldn't afford an oscilloscope. We didn't have an oscilloscope, so it was a big deal when we got one. Now to think you can have one on your phone. They have a signal generator. It was one of the particular resources that I found on Scientix that, um, uh, you know, was very useful and got some uh, apps to to download and to use, and they were free. So between the apps and the um, these these online uh, tools, I think. Uh, you know, people can assemble uh, certainly lots of very useful resources. Uh, and the, the challenge, I think, in the end of the day is to, uh, you know, to kind of to keep the focus and find the good ones. And I suppose with, um, as with technology, uh, it changes all the time. So what's useful this year may not be so useful next year. I think maybe has everyone gone home? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are, we are, we are still here. We're still here, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, the questions are not coming. They get getting tired. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean it's it's like, uh, and I see messages coming up here, and people are sharing, and uh, it's one of the nice things about the webinar is, and it's like. Uh, it's like all teacher training, I think, is you often learn more from the person beside you than you do from the speaker. You know, it gets people, get people's minds start thinking and uh, and lots of people uh, know things and uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, dawn on them or strike them that, they, you know, that they're worth sharing. So um, it's nice to see, I think the chat facility there is nice for people to share and uh, uh, you know, get ideas. Anyway. Okay. So, thank yeah, thank you, uh, William. I don't know if you have. Uh, Is that okay in our questions? I think yeah. uh, they have done. Yeah. So uh, I just would like to thank for for all the presentation, for all the simulations you have shown us. Sure. Yeah. Uh, or all the attendees, all the teachers are going to use the mailing now in their classes. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, as you said, yeah. to, the good thing about the webinars is that you are teaching something, but you are receiving some. Yes, yeah, I mean, there's more. We're all learning. We're all, and I mean, the uh, that's the great thing too about our group is that uh, there's such an amount of knowledge spread out, you know, and that that we can share among ourselves and. And even if you pick up one idea, I think, you know, it's good. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. So I think for today it's uh, it's uh, done. But we are going to continue learning all the day. Yes. We are, we are going to have in a couple of weeks, we will have the 6th of May, the next uh, webinar. It will be the 6th. And the title of this webinar is Educational Robotics and Coding Inside the Curriculum an approach to promote STEM and inclusion in the class. The presenter is going to be Tulia Orchid, and she's the scientist ambassador for Italy. So, yes. 
Yeah, so we are going to continue with the webinars and continue learning. So that's it. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Victor, and everybody. Thanks for sticking sticking with the with the program for the for the webinar. Okay, we'll see some of you the weekend after next in London, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>